thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Wojtek Ruhanek. I work at Red Hat as a developer. And in this talk, I'd like to, to talk about the, some uh, uh, ideas which uh, Sunlock is built upon to give you, hopefully, some good starting point to use uh, Sunlock and understand how it works and eventually how to tune and configure it for your application. Uh, before we start, uh, how many of you know what Sunlock is or even use it? Okay, a couple of hands, but not everyone. So let me first uh, briefly uh, start with motivation why we actually need, we need a piece uh, of software like Sunlock. I guess uh, all of you ever heard about uh, the possibility that we have uh, some uh, storage area uh, basically right of the disk and we access the, these disks from uh, uh, compute nodes over the network. So uh, basically in this setup when a couple of machines access uh, 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 disk array, uh, you sooner or later come into the situation when uh, two or even more nodes try to access or write the same disk area. This will, of, of course, result into the data corruption, and this is probably what you don't want to happen. Uh, so probably the first idea which came to your mind, how to protect this, is to introduce some <coughs> external uh, lock manager here, uh, which, will, which will, would control the traffic and allow various nodes to access uh, different uh, location of the disk. Uh, this, of course, works, but I have a couple of drawbacks. Besides uh, the additional round trip to this lock manager, what would happen if this component dies? Of course, uh, your application gets stuck because, uh, uh, or at least won't be able to write any data because you won't be able to get any logs from the, the lock manager which died. So uh, probably maybe we can do better. And maybe you can come up with idea to somehow collocate the locks directly with the, with the data the locks are trying to protect. And this is actually what Sunlock does. It's a lock manager which uh, uses a short file storage for uh, its processing and keeping the locks. Of course, you don't have to use uh, the locks provided by Sunlock uh, to uh, protect the, only the data. You can use these logs for whatever you want, but uh, to use these logs for protecting the data on the shared storage is uh, probably the most typical usage. And uh, uh, the Sunlock is built upon two uh, algorithms. It's disk paxos and delta leases. And in the following uh, slides, I will try to really briefly outline these algorithms because Sunlock is a little bit co uh, <clears throat> hard to configure or at least do it right. So uh, before you touch uh, any Sunlock configuration, you should really read the documentation carefully. Maybe you should also read pieces of source code to be really sure what it does. And uh, to uh, this uh, uh, explanation hopefully will give you some uh, good start uh, or would make it more easy to understand what's going on there, at least, I hope. So, uh, let's first start with uh, classical Paxos algorithm, because this Paxos is just modification of uh, classical Paxos algorithm. So, uh, are you all familiar with Paxos algorithm? Maybe not, so uh, I will just uh, start with short introduction of Paxos. Paxos is basically consensus algorithm which tries to solve consensus uh, between a couple of machines, which the goal is to agree on some single value. While it may sound pretty trivial, it's actually a very hard problem, and it's actually one of the hardest problems in distributed system world because of latency on the network, uh, network which is unreliable. This is just one of the examples. Uh, so basically, uh, it's pretty hard problem, and Paxos was one of the first, uh, or Leslie Lamport, who came up with Paxos algorithm, was one of the first 
who successfully uh, solved this problem. So how classical Paxos works. Basically, each uh, node which joins the consensus procedure tries to propose its value. Uh, this is called usually in uh, the paper's ballot, and each proposal has uh, its own number, n, which is usually called ballot number. So each node in the first phase called prepare, called prepare phase propose this uh, ballot number. And other nodes, <laughs> upon receiving this prepare message, response uh, with uh, uh, <clears throat> the minimum uh, proposal number, which is uh, uh, the number uh, they ac obtain from other nodes. So basically, if I s send number two, and uh, one node here, for example, already accepted some proposal, uh, with uh, bot number one, it will accept my value, but it will also respond with already accepted value. When I uh, received uh, the response from majority of nodes, I will search through the replies, and if there is already some accepted value, so basically which means that there is a node in a cluster which already accepted some value, I can't propose my own value, but I have to use this value. And, but I can continue to the next phase when I broadcast another message and ask the other nodes if they accept this value. I will still keep this number n, but will use this uh, value. If my number is still the largest one, the nodes will accept this value and return OK. If not, they will uh, send me that they have already some higher number n and return me this number, and then I will have to abort and start from the beginning. And if I got from majority of nodes response that they will accept my value I won, uh, my accept, this value is accepted, and I can broadcast that we agreed that this value is accepted. So basically this sounds like three-phase commit from the database world. We have two-phase commit or three-phase commit, so this, this is a little bit similar to three-phase commit. So, do you at least uh, roughly understand this? If yes, so uh, understanding this Paxos would be very easy because it's just uh, a very slight modification of these algorithms. Uh, again, it was done by Lamport and Gaffney, and basically, uh, now we assume that we have uh, N processors and M disk, where when uh, these processors tries to write, each process each process uh, obtains some block on a each disk when it it will try uh, this data structure. It contains ballot number again, uh, the value which was already accepted if there was any any such, and the uh, value with the highest ballot number so far. So basically, instead of exchanging messages uh, over the network between the nodes, the nodes write this record directly to the shared storage to dedicated place for each node. And we assume, of course, that write operation is atomic. So we typically write only the size of uh, 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 block or uh, we typically write one block uh, of the disk. So we start uh, as uh, before that for each uh, disk I will write my record and at the same time I will also read uh, the records of all other uh, processors which wrote their data structure on the disk. And again, I will check uh, all other what, from what I read. I will check these bolt numbers, and if uh, I found out that there is some higher bolt number, I have to abort this my uh, this process and start again with the higher bolt number. But if not, uh, I can continue further and choose the value again. I have to choose if there is already any value written. I will have to choose the value written with the highest bolt number. And I will uh, 
from now on I have to propose this value. And then I will continue to the second phase. Then I will try to again write uh, this value I found out in previous step and again read uh, all records from other processors. And again, I need to check if all both numbers are still uh, lower than mine. If so, um, I won. If not, I will have to abort and start again. And that's basically it. If I won the process, I can again broadcast the value which was selected and I'm done. And I have, for example, obtained the lock. So, if so far so good, there are some unanswered questions. For example, how do I add more nodes? In, you maybe didn't notice and I didn't mention, but for example, if you want to know what the majority is, you know, uh, you have to know how many nodes are joining the, this consensus procedure. But if you are only writing and reading this, how you find out? Uh, and uh, maybe even harder problem is how to establish the mapping between uh, the uh, uh, disk uh, sector or block on the disk and uh, the node which tries to write there. They first need somehow to agree which uh, node will, will write to which, which space. So that's why, why we need something more than this Paxos. And this is solved by uh, Delta Lease algorithm uh, introduced by Chokul and Malkin. And uh, it's actually a pretty simple algorithm. Here's uh, the life cycle which provides a lease. Uh, and here's the life cycle. You basically try to obtain the lease. If you are successful, you will hold it and eventually release it. The important thing is that if you obtain the lease, you are allowed to keep it for only some amount of time, which is called big delta. And also, uh, algorithm assumes that all operations are bounded by some amount of time, which is called small delta. Uh, it can be generalized to unknown de delta uh, de delay model, but some of <coughs> use uh, this known delta model. Uh, and it's used in this way that basically it, uh, uh, the process tries to write a value on uh, some location on disk, wait for some time. Uh, if the process is happy and the lock is not held, it waits two small deltas, read this location again, and if the value is the same, uh, it obtains the lock. If the lock is already held, it will, it will wait big delta plus five my small delta and again repeats until it obtains the lock. It's quite trivial, but the uh, algorithm, but uh, the main drawback is that it may take quite a long time to obtain the lock. Uh, so <coughs> how, how these uh, two algorithms are used in a sunlock? Uh, Delta Lee's algorithm is used to acquiring the unique host ID for each host which is basically the number from 1 to 2,000, uh, uh, which uh, basically uh, says each node which uh, block on the shared storage sh should be used for Paxos leases, for writing Paxos leases. Uh, and it also is used by Sunlock to determine <laughs> if uh, the machine is alive, because you have to renew after this big delta your lease. So if you don't refresh your release, Sunlock will uh, <laughs> conclude that this machine uh, is dead and will try to kill it. And then uh, when you obtain uh, your ID, which determines the place on the shared storage where you should write your Paxos leases, you can use disk Paxos to happily try to op obtain or complete, compete for, for the leases with our, other processes. Hmm. In the Sunlock terminology, if you read the documentation, the delta leases is called lock space, and as I said, prevents uh, host to uh, to have the same ID. Uh, Sunlock limitation is that it's limited to 2,000 hosts. It's because of uh, 
uh, uh, uh, not very long time ago, it was allowed only to use one megabyte size for the log space, and if the uh, block size is 512, uh, the result is that it's limited to 2,000 hosts. But recently it has changed, and you can use uh, also uh, uh, different size, but not to support a high amount of hosts, but to support also uh, the disk drives, which has uh, block size for four kilobytes. And you can configure with these parameters, but uh, 2000 host is still a limitation hard coded in Sunlock. But actually, if you want, you can very easily change it in the source code, but you have to recompile Sunlock. And Sunlock uh, internally use this big delta lease to 20 seconds, so each process has to renew uh, its uh, delta lease in 20 seconds. So if you, for example, have uh, uh, your application use uh, uh, Sunlock, you, it's good to keep in mind that uh, it will time out after 20 seconds. So example, for example, if you have something built on top, on top of that and you configure timeout for one minute, it's nice, but Sunlock will uh, <coughs> die or will expire below after 20 seconds. And the small delta lease uh, mentioned in algorithm before in Sunlock is 10 seconds. Uh, so, and as I said, these leases are also used for uh, checking if host is alive. Uh, Sunlock is more robust and has other component like watchdog. So after 10 seconds, if uh, uh, the lock is not renewed, Sunlock will start procedure of fencing your node and watchdog will uh, after some another timeout, try to kill your machine. Uh, Paxos leases are very fast to acquire, so they are suitable for uh, real locks in an application. In a Sunlock terminology, uh, it's called resources. And uh, when I said that when you won the battle and your value has won, you, that you commit the value somehow. So uh, in uh, reality, in Sunlock, it's implemented that way that uh, your, this record is written to the first uh, block of the disk. So this is how you propagate the value in Sunlock. And uh, it's actually somehow combined with delta leases that when you uh, renew the delta lease, it will also renew all your Paxos leases. So it's uh, some combined in Sunlock together also in this way. So in summary, well, if you use, uh, some, if you want to use Sunlock in your application, you first need to prepare directory structure uh, where all these uh, processes will write. It's uh, uh, called uh, in initialization of the log space. In uh, Sunlock documentation, it uh, has to be done only once. And then whenever your uh, application or start or node uh, joins uh, the cluster, it will need to join the log space, which means it needs to acquire the delta lease to get the host ID so the no host knows how, where to write. Then when you acquire a log for a release, it means that you obtain the Paxos lease uh, I speak be, uh, before. And when your application stops, it basically leaves the log space, which means that it releases the delta lease logs. As I said, Paxos is more complex. There are more pieces like Watchdog, so there is definitely something you can. Uh, this presentation could could be much longer to explain all the stuff, but I have no time for it, so it's up to you. And I would uh, really try to encourage you before you you change anything in Sunlock, please be sure that you know what you are doing and read the documentation carefully, and I hope that this presentation gives you at least some first step and make the uh, understanding of the documentation more easy for you. So that's all. Thanks. Uh, and are there any questions? Who is using Sunlock? Pardon? Who is using Sunlock? Sunlock is... Uh, 
I, at least, uh, I know at least about one famous project which used Sunlock and it's called OWERT. It's probably the best example, but I think it's also used by clustered LVM and probably other projects. You can, but you have to renew the lock in 20 seconds. So basically, it means you. That's, that's, then I link the sum of the library. Yeah. It's my responsibility from my application, or is it library handling that for me? So I, I just obtain it from the library, and the library handles. Typically, typically, it runs as a daemon on your host, which do all the stuff for you. But uh, it provides also client library, so you can uh, access it also from uh, your <coughs> code from your application. Can we leave uh, disk caches enabled rather than sandlock? Disk caches, uh, I'm not sure. I, I would uh, definitely not do that. Uh, uh, you probably have to do direct I.O. because unless you can get stuck on, in the cache and uh, th that would be useful, useless. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not completely sure uh, if, uh, uh, but it has to be implemented in some lock using direct IO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm talking hardware caches on the very storage device. That was the question, oh. which would kill my performance to the same device in the normal IO path, but it would be required. You know, my answer is no. Right, but anyway, that was the question. Caches on the hardware device. I get an HDD with built-in cache management on its internal cache. I'm not expert on hardware, so I'm not really sure. But uh, I, I would probably don't do that because unless some value can get stuck in the cache, and in the meantime, uh, <coughs> two applications can think that uh, they can access the resource. It's more about use of state, which leads yeah. to the other question, if uh, Sunlock runtime provides recovery mechanisms no. for that kind of situation. No, um, uh, at least I'm not aware about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if no other, there are no un any other questions, we are encouraged to read the paper, and if you read uh, the uh, disk boxes paper, this is homework for you. Lamport, uh, I, uh, uh, to be honest, didn't notice, but uh, on uh, his page uh, has a statement that there are about a dozen errors in his paper, but he's not going to fix it, and it's homework for the readers. So you are encouraged to find uh, all the errors there. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>